Hello and welcome to Dr. Fred Fizzle here and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit, a little bit about saccharides and, uh, and the bonding between saccharides which, which is known as glycosidic bonding. Okay, so first of all, what is a saccharide? Well, a saccharide is a monomer of, of a long chain of saccharides. Um, okay, so I've drawn you a hexagon. And now a hexagon is the shape of a hexo sugar. Now uh, a, a sugar is a particular type of saccharide. So you can have like uh, glucose, fructose, that, that they're all particular saccharides or they're all monomers of a particular long polymer chain. So this hexose is an example of a monomer. You don't just have to have hexose. Hexose just means that it's, it's a sugar that has six carbons in it. So you have your C1 here, C2 there, C3 there, 4 there, 5 there, and your sixth carbon there. Okay, so, so let's go into a bit more detail with the structure. For this hexose, I'm going to do you an, an H, an OH, H, OH, H, OH, H, OH, H. OH and on the anomeric carbon it's still H OH. Now the anomeric carbon is, is special, it's, it's also the first carbon and the reason why it's special is because supposing that OH was above this midline and the, and the hydrogen above this midline here swap places with this OH group or this hydroxyl group you'd be left with something called beta glucose. Now this is an example of a hexo sugar known as alpha glucose. Hexose because it's got six carbons. Now you can also get trio sugars, trios. An example of that would be TP, which is used in the light independent stage of photosynthesis. I've already done a video on that, so if you're, in, you're particularly interested in what triose phosphate is, then watch my um, light independent reaction, and then you can find out a bit more about its significance and stuff in that reaction. Okay, so there's another one called pentose, which, as you can guess, has five carbons, and again is a it is a saccharide monomer. Um, so this I wrote monomer here, but it's actually a saccharide monomer. Because a, a saccharide is the name given to a sugar, a simple sugar like this. Um, but whereas there's bonding between multiple sugars, and then you can get things like disaccharides and polysaccharides. Now you're probably thinking, well, what, well, how do we define a disaccharide? A disaccharide it is something which has two of these monomers bonded together. So you're probably thinking, well, how are these bonded together? Well, you can have something called a glycosidic bond that forms between this OH and and the um, and the OH of the next of the next um, sugar in the in the chain. So so again, you're going to have your fourth carbon here, and it sort of links on to the same mo molecule. So you've got C3 here, your five carbon up there, your C6 here, here, your C1 there, your C2 here. And you see through here. So, so basically, I've bonded together two um, hexo sugars just for this example. So as you can see, there's six carbons here, and six carbons means it's a hexo sugar. And um, so I label this hexose again. It's actually going to be alpha glucose again because my H is above the midline. If my OH was above the midline on this anomeric carbon, this first carbon, then as I said before, it'd be beta glucose instead. Um, and you can get chains with alpha glucose and beta glucose in. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you some basic chains that you need to know for your A level course. Okay, so so first of all, how how does this how are these two bonded together? They're bonded together by something called a glycosidic bond, and that forms in this particular vicinity here. So glycosidic, and a glycosidic bond um, is formed by a condensation reaction. And condensation just means it gives out water. Water being H2O, which means it involves two of the hydrogens here and an oxygen. So it forms there. And as, as you would expect, once this is gone, you're just left with an oxygen there. So that this oxygen will be sitting in the middle here between the two between the two sugars, and it will actually bond them together between these two carbons. So you're left with two carbons with this in between them. And and this whole thing here is known as the glycosidic bond. Okay? And we, and we can call this process here elimination of water also. This condensation reaction involves elimination of water from these two 
from the from these two monomers of glucose. Um, uh, there are a number of people who, who like struggle with this because they think elimination means that water just disappears. Water doesn't disappear; it goes into the, the surroundings. That's why when you have condensation on, on your windscreen and stuff, that we're actually referring to the water build-up in terms of water droplets that's condensed from its vaporized form. Condensation is just like a general term, like, like, which isn't to be muddled up with anything else, and it just means basically the formation of water, essentially. So just label here: formation of water. So you're probably wondering, well, well, how do, how do these how, how do these saccharides actually break down again? Well, they break down like using a special type of enzyme. Um, I'm not going to name the enzyme for you today because because that's very advanced um, and it's, it's got quite a confusing name that you probably won't be able to remember anyway. So basically, for the purpose of this video, all I'm going to tell you is that there's an enzyme that actually splits up this bond again once it's formed between this oxygen, um, once it's formed between these two carbons using the oxygen. Sorry. Um, it can be split, known as the process of hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, meaning hydro, which is water, and lysis, meaning breakdown, or in this case, splitting. So it's essentially water splitting. Okay. Um, so that's that's how you how you break down this disaccharide here. So we've got monosaccharides, disaccharides. I've discussed with you polysaccharides. There's something called an oligosaccharide. Oligosaccharide are right up here. Oligo saccharide spelt similar but with a ligo at the front and a ligosaccharide is something between with that has two to ten monomers in the chain so if you if you remember like i mentioned that each one of these is a monomer so there's two in this one so this would be called a disaccharide but it can also be called an oligosaccharide because an oligosaccharide has between two and ten monomers and this does so this is an, an example of a ligosaccharide all right so you're probably wondering well well, well, I've drawn you like here, here a, a particular type of a particular type of, of of disaccharide known as an oligosaccharide. But you're probably wondering, well, is there specific examples of, of like polymer chains that are called different things? And yes, there are. There's glycogen, is an example of a of a polypeptide chain, and you have starch as well. And then you have have you have you, a lot of disaccharide molecules such as sucrose. Um, you have your maltose, which just consists of two alpha glucose. So I actually drawn you maltose here. This is two alpha glucose together, forms a, a disaccharide known as maltose. Um, sucrose is fructose and glucose bonded together. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with how fructose can be formed from glucose. So I'll just I'll just discuss that with you briefly. Glucose can be formed in can, can be converted into fructose, like, like by an enzyme known as isomerase. Isomerase, I'll just write over here, over here just so you know how to spell it. Isomerase, okay, uh, excuse me. Um, so, maltose is your disaccharide. Sucrose is another type of disaccharide. Um, and sucrose is formed from this fructose, which is converted like, like by this isomerase from glucose to fructose. And, and fructose can be bonded to another glucose that hasn't been converted into fructose in order to form your disaccharide known as sucrose. Disaccharide, diamine, two. Saccharide is your individual monomers that join together. Starch and glycogen are, are, are examples of, of like of, of, are examples of polysaccharides. Sorry, and starch is primarily found in plants. Starch it is an energy storage molecule, um, and it consists of a lot of alpha glucose molecules as I've drawn here. So basically, it's just a really long over ten chain. Um, polysaccharides ten plus basically they're, they're longer than oligosaccharides is, is the sort, sort of definition of it. Uh, polysaccharides just means poly just means a lot of, of monomers bonded together and saccharides is sugars. Okay, so so we have here sucrose starch, uh, starch found in plants as I just said. Glycogen is found in animals and and the main difference is glycogen tends to be shorter and more compact and it's used for the same thing. It's, it's used a lot like, like in, gly in glycogenolysis and um, which which is the formation of glucose from glycogen, which basically means that that can be used in respiration to release energy. Um, and a glycogen is basically a more compact molecule than starch, and it's more of a branch chain. Now, now we also have, have like, like a number of other different structures. Like in my next video, I'll discuss with you the structure of cellulose, which it, which is like, like another example of how these particular saccharides are bonded together. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been quite informative and, you, and you've learned something new. See you in the next video on sugars again, and, and, and I'll be discussing in a bit more detail how they're used in, for, for like more complex molecules. So I'll see you then.